Thank you for staying tuned. We're still talking about autism awareness and how to bridge the gap. And Dr. Denny was just talking about, you know, what to, what would often notice, or what, I mean, who, sorry, an autistic patient is. Okay, so I was saying that, um, so there are problems with speech, with communication, mm -hmm. both verbal and non-verbal. Okay. Verbal, many of them don't use words, so they don't talk the way we talk. They mm -hmm. have difficulties producing words. Some tried to some extent to use words, but they are far below what you expect for their mm. age. Okay. Um, some repeat people's words. If you say something, they repeat after you. So we call that a cholelia. So they continuously do that. Some might reverse pronouns. Mm. So if you say, they want to say you, they'll say I. So if they are hungry, they'll say you are hungry. Mm. So we call that pronominal reversal. So they have issues with communication and with, with use of words. Mm. In terms of non verbal some of them really don't understand social cues. You know, sometimes you are in a place with your child and you just make a sign and then they understand. Mm -hmm. Many children with autism really don't, are not able to interpret social cues. So they are totally in a world of their own. That's the way we describe them. Mm. Totally on their own. Like they are not part of what is going on around them. Um, physically, they might not have any obvious disability. They might look healthy, um, no, nothing to show that they have autism. So there is no physical, or there are no physical attributes okay. of autism, as okay. opposed to what you have in things like Down syndrome. Okay. Like if you see a child with Down syndrome, almost immediately you recognize that this is Down syndrome. Okay. But most children with autism, you need to interact with them to then be able to say that maybe they are, they are not speaking or they are not responding to you or they have some behaviors that would suggest that they have autism. So b by and large, that's what autism. So basically, they have problem communication with speech, and then they have repetitive behavior, which usually is the one that people see first. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a child just in his corner, flapping, spinning, and making some very um, un unacceptable sounds. Okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Mr. Oparimi, now with all these things she has mentioned, she talked about the repetitive speaking. She talked about these different att attributes now being a special educator how easy or should we say how difficult is it educating a child with autism well number one thing the first thing is that you must understand the child first okay. coming down to the child's level that's the first thing because you have to give the child attention first mm -hmm. like a child he has no uh, communication skill so you should, there's what we call preference. Mm -hmm. Everybody have a preference. You look at the child's preference to get the child's attention. attention. Mm -hmm. So after getting the child's attention, you can introduce the, the pattern of, of, of section or therapy you want to introduce to the child. And there is what we call uh, giving the child uh, uh, ability to they, they insulate or uh, teach a teaching or section the build the one to prompt any section or any therapy you might have a curriculum or a program mm -hmm. designed okay this is what I want to do with the child mm -hmm. and the child brings in another thing so from the child's behavior or what the child is doing at that moment mm -hmm. it can start mm -hmm. your teaching or your therapy from that okay is it normally an individualistic approach? Yes. It's one child per yes, teacher? Yes, it's a one-on-one -on -one section. Okay. A child per therapy. Oh, okay. okay. So to have a child attention more. All right. Okay. Should children on the autistic spectrum be allowed to interact with other children? Do you agree that they should be separated from other children? No. Because first thing is that a child have problem with communication. Hmm. So the need to talk more, to interact with people, so keeping them somewhere might not help them to talk, to have interaction. We want them to overcome the, 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 the interaction section that they should have able to say what. Like a regular child now, most time they have to change. Okay, daddy, I want biscuits, I want water, I want water. But an autistic child will not do that. Mm. Most time they pick words and they show gestures when they need things. So. They should put them in a regular, in a mainstream school whereby mm. they can relate more. 
as time goes on, if they have much work, people communicate with them more, they can mm -hmm. start developing their own mm -hmm. world from that. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting that you say that, that they should be put in the regular schools, but it's not uncommon to hear that the children like this have been bullied in such schools. Maybe not even physically. Some of them are insulted, some of them are called all sorts mm -hmm. of names. That even drives them away. You know, they just want to be by themselves in such schools. So do you think it's such a great idea? Or do you think it should be with people who understand them more, people who are more like them? Well, the first thing is that if you find them in the regular school settings like that, mm -hmm everybody should understand the needs of their child. Mm -hmm. So if you understand the need of the child, they will put, they, will, they, will, they, will, they won't maltreat them. Mm -hmm. Now, most times they keep to themselves. Mm -hmm. But when you understand that a child is keeping to himself or herself, you should tell the colleagues that no, this one is growing up with uh, A or with B. You should try to communicate with him, don't bully him, he has a need. Mm. So with that, everybody with a, a, a that environment should understand the need of the child. But if they don't understand the need of the child, the, that, that's when the art of bullying might come up from other colleagues. But if they understand the child, they won't bully him, and they will come down to his level to interact with him more. Mm. Mm. Dr. Adini, some of the symptoms you mentioned when you were talking earlier, some children might normally exhibit some of these symptoms. Does that um, automatically mean they are on the autistic spectrum? Um, so there's, there are things that are referred to as milestones. So there, we have milestones for different age groups of children. For instance, for um, a one-year-old, you expect that they start to want to try to communicate. About 18 months, you expect the child to be able to have clear words, like first words, dada, mama, and all. So when a behavior is totally not acceptable for a certain age, then it is a problem. So if you have a child who is six years and is not talking, then it's a problem. A child who is supposed to be seated or be with his group or pairs and he's not able to do that and it's continuous of course children from time to time might have issues like that but if it's continuous and that is the pattern of that child then it is a problem and usually that's what we, that's why we call it a spectrum you know a spectrum is like on a on a line so we have from mild to the very severe ones mm -hmm. So there are some that they might not have all the symptoms, like you, you might not find every symptom in them. Mm. But once you start to pick, when it, once a child is getting to the milestone and is not achieving those milestones, then you start to get worried about, about that child. And it's continuous like that. How, so, how early is it even, how early can the person be diagnosed? Okay, so currently, we, usually we talk about 18 months. Okay. You know, because a key, one of the key um, symptoms is speech and i said that by 18 months you expect that a child should be able to say the common words water dada mama so by 18 months you can actually diagnose a, a child as having autism mm. as a matter of fact in developed countries like in the u.s they start to monitor children from the womb so we have people who are fitter psychiatrists mm. so what they do is look after babies in the womb, in the womb. and if there are there are risk factors maybe there's already a child in the family who has autism or a father has a symptom or symptoms of autism, then they start to monitor the child even from the womb. So immediately the child is born, they are, they are doing a lot of assessment, following up every six months, and so on and so on. So, but clinically, um, typically now, by 18 months, you can diagnose a child as having autism. I'd, I'd also like to know what predisposes a child to autism. Uh, because you talked about if the child is not talking or if the parents you know already have some symptoms or some factors that you know may, maybe the, the parents are autistic or in, or something but what if the parents are not is it hereditary but okay. well, we'll get to that we'll take okay. this short video clip on, video clip on autism we'll be back we are all different and that's wonderful some differences are easy to see height, hairstyle, 
gender, eye color, and so on. Other differences can't be seen. Our favorite foods, fears, or special skills. Interestingly, the way we see the world is also different. For instance, what do you see in this drawing? Most people see a duck, but some of you might have seen a rabbit. Whichever you saw, you are correct. This is just a trick drawing to show you that all brains work differently. The brain is your body's computer. It works differently for all of us and controls how you learn. That's why we are all good at different things. How you feel, which is why we all feel different emotions. And how you communicate. Sometimes the brain is connected in such a way it affects senses and how we perceive and read situations and interactions. This is known as autism. Many people have autism, so it's likely you already know someone who is autistic. And for this reason, it's useful to know a little bit about autism. The special wiring inside an autistic brain can sometimes make the person good at tasks we may find difficult, such as mathematics, drawing, or music. It can also do the opposite, and activities we find too easy are incredibly difficult to learn, such as making friends. The senses constantly send information to your brain about your surroundings and other people. However, when a person's brain and its senses don't communicate well, the brain can become overwhelmed and confused, affecting how they see the world. Picture yourself walking down the street. This is how an autistic brain may experience the same walk. Scary, isn't it? Sadly, in many cases, the person can't say out loud how they feel. So, even though there's chaos going on in their heads, they seem okay on the outside, unable to ask for help. We will develop behaviors to help us feel calm in uncomfortable situations. We may look away, hug ourselves, chew our fingernails, fidget, bite our lips, and so on. Equally, autistic people develop behaviors that help them cope with these intense moments. These actions may seem unusual, but they're just their way to feel calm. When they happen, it means they are having a hard time. The kind thing to do is not to give them an even harder time by getting cross, ignoring them, or mocking them. Remember, just because a PlayStation can't read an Xbox game, it doesn't mean it's broken. People with autism need friends who are willing to take the time to know them. With good communication and plenty of patience, everyone would be better off. People with autism are not ill or broken. They simply have a unique view of the world. And with a little support from their friends, they might just be able to share that view with us. Autism can make Amazing things happen. That's that's a very enlightening video, if you ask me. And just before we took that break, I was asking if there's anything that predisposes a child to autism. What, what do you think parents, mm -hmm. you know, need to check out? The same way people check out, okay, this is my blood group, this is my, what, what, can, what can we do? Okay, um, so there are a couple of um, factors that have been associated with autism. Um, there's no one thing that has been said, okay, if we remove this, then mm. we can remove autism. You know, for instance, in malaria, we know that there is a parasite. Sure. But that's not the same with autism. So there are a couple of factors. The, f the first or the one that is um, that seems to have been well established is that it runs in the family. Okay. So children can inherit it. 
So if you have a father who has symptoms or who has autism and then has a child, the risk that that child will have autism is quite high. Mm. And then if you have siblings, also that it's, it's high. Um, it, there's a description of a twin that's called the identical twin. So if you have mm. one twin with autism, the likelihood that the other twin will have autism is about 80%. So it's almost like going to happen to the second twin. So it's highly, highly hereditary. There are some other factors that have also been um, associated with it. One of it is um, when the age of the parents are advanced. You know, now we talk more about the age of the father. Mm. So we have parents who are over 40, start then having children. Then these children are at higher risk okay. of having autism if you compare to those who are born to parents younger than 40. There are a lot of reasons why that has been, why people have put forward for that. Okay. Um, so other factors will include what is known as obstetric complications, complications around pregnancy, birth, and, and um, immediately after birth of a child. Okay. So we have a mother who was very ill during pregnancy, um, who has a very high blood pressure that is not well controlled. And then if you have a mother who is in labor for so long, prolonged labor can <coughs> predispose a child and then the child comes out um, very ill and not having enough oxygen that can predispose immediately after bad things like jaundice that's when they have yellowness Yellow. of the eyes mm. those things can predispose a child to what is what like I said there is no one single thing that has been that's just a couple and then environmental factors like toxins this is quite common in the um, industrialized world where they have they release a lot of toxins into the environment things like lead and so on mm. and so forth. So those are some of the risk factors. Mm. Mr. Kwarimi, you deal more with parents and patients, I mean, one-on-one -on -one, um, with autism. How would you describe or assess the interaction between parents and child in, in Nigeria here? Let, let's even say, even in Nevada. How, oftentimes, you know, we hear people who lock away their children, who don't want them to, don't let people know that this is my child. How is the interaction? How, how is it? Well, the, what really happens with parents is that the, the acceptance and labeling. Mm -hmm. Most time, when a child is being diagnosed that he has autism, most parents they don't accept mm -hmm. that their child has autism because they don't want people to label the child for them. Yeah. So, but there's some things, there's some traits that we shows in that child that okay, there's something wrong with this child. Mm -hmm. You should, uh, most time you have to give the parent to, uh, there's what we call the psychotherapy, mm -hmm. let them understand what is wrong with the child. Okay. Though the child have, might have a special need, but it's not the, it might not, it, it won't deprive the child from achieving the aims of or, or, or his goals, it might be on a low pace that the child will be achieving it. Mm. So the, the, the interaction is uh, quite low because most parents, they don't want you to label their child for them. They, want, they don't want to accept that, okay, my child has autism mm. and everybody will be questioning them for that. Okay, mm. how come, how do you go about it? So they, 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 they want to keep their child away mm. from grounding of people to avoid questions. Mm. And most time, you should bring the child out. Like, uh, the way, like, uh, it, and how they say that, the way you accept what you have, that's how people that's how accept people it. Also, yeah. Yeah. If you showed more love and care for that child, the same way the other people will treat the child for you. Mm -hmm. So they will interact, they will interact more with the child, they will care more for that child. But if you isolate the child, if you lock the child up, that means everything the child needs to learn, you have you you you've deprived the child from different uh, 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 activities, different uh, stages that the child should achieve. Of the children you've interacted with in the past, have you ever had a child and their parents not, you know, maybe exhibiting some of these traits. Somebody's, well, just going, just going, you know, just not trying to associate per se in public with the child. Have you ever seen such? Mm, most time, 
we have cases like that that the parents they don't want people around to know what, what is wrong with the child mm. so they might keep the child inside the car and they come down mm -hmm. to talk because they, they they understand the child that something is wrong but they don't want other people to know, to know. so um that w that's a bridge in the communication gap between the child and most time when they can talk is when they get home mm. if they have them most time they don't take them to church because there are some uh, 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 so there's some behavior the the autistic, autistic child will exhibit when they say crowd mm. so um and if a child of three years four years showing t tantrum flapping of hand people will question ah, what's wrong with you is everything all right so all these things parents don't want people to know so it reduces the communication uh, between the child and the parents now doctor is there a way we can eliminate some of those tantrums too okay so uh, the, the, those groups of behaviors are referred to as challenging behavior okay um, so there have been there are things that can be done from the, the parents understanding what the, the type of illness that the child has because that will go a long way okay helping them to accept that there is a problem okay and um, usually we tell the parent that they should, you can separate the child from the disorder. You can love this child, mm. but you can fight the disorder. Okay. So if they are coming from that angle, that makes things easier. So first of all, most times the, the tantrums are as a result of the fact that they can't express themselves. Mm. They want something. They are hungry, but they don't know how to say it. And nobody seems to be understanding what they want. So there are things that we can put in place to help them to do that especially when they still don't have words or mm -hmm. they can't speak properly so there are a couple of um, therapies that we can use apart from when it gets to a point that they might need some medications to help get a medication that can help mm -hmm. so before we get to that point we want to do what is called behavioral modifications okay. so that will require things that the parents can do for instance they can use pictures to communicate so there's something that's called picture exchange communication system okay. so where you for instance you can have a picture of a cup to to connote that i want water mm -hmm. so when they want water they go touch the okay. picture and then mm -hmm. the mother will know okay you want water or they want to go to the bathroom or the toilet there's a picture of the toilet so that's a way to reduce some of the tantrums mm -hmm. you can also help to make the home comfortable for them because some of them they are just not comfortable because there's a lot of cluster, there's so many the places not to know that there are many of them are very orderly. They want things arranged properly. If you can just do that, mm -hmm. that can reduce a whole lot of of um, of um, tantrum that they might have. Sometimes they are just not comfortable. They might have constipation, they are not sleeping well. If you can reduce a lot of all those things, they can. And then there's some other therapy that will be technical. Things like uh, applied behavioral therapy mm -hmm. or um, functional behavioral analysis when you follow through the different procedures or the behaviors and then you analyze why did this child cry at this time or why has this child start to throw tantrum at this moment so you relate events to what has happened and then you're able to resolve what you think caused the problem so that next time you can you can prevent mm -hmm. tantrums but like i said that there are medications that you can, you can use um to help them to be calm, you know, for a while, usually not for a long time. And then when the therapies are ongoing, speech therapy, all those kind of therapies, then they are, and then they are getting better. People are understanding them more. Mm. And then things can get easier with the parents and also with the child. Okay. So do they ever grow out of it or you, okay. once you're autistic, you just remain so like the, that? Like I said, that uh, the, the spectrum. Mm. So you have the mind to the very severe. Um, so usually we talk, we don't talk about a cure. We talk about management. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can manage the disorder. You can manage the symptoms. So, but at some point, the very mild ones, you might, you might get to a point that they live independently. Nobody knows that it, it, there is a problem. So they can manage on their own. They don't need supervision and all that. But majority of the other ones, for the rest of, of their lives, might need somebody to supervise them to do one or two things. You know. So it's a, it's a usually a lifelong journey.
for the individual and for the family. We don't talk about growing out of it. So we talk about management and then being able to cope with the, with the disorder. Now, some of the things I mentioned, um, some of the things the UN are also trying to achieve as the world is, as they celebrate this year's World Autism Awareness Day, uh, we talked about the right to be heard, political participation and advocacy. We just, you know, just this month, we just go through the general elections. And most of the time, it looks like we don't see very many of, you know, people who have one challenge or the other, or one disability or the other participating in elections in they, they don't participate so to say in political stuff is there a reason for example can an autistic patient participate in an election is there something that would probably you know make them hesitate yes now we thank god they just passed the appeal on disability now yeah. uh, with that there should be a room for them to participate in political uh, settings or, or election. Number one, you should make the environment conducive for them yes. if you want them to participate. How? Now, like every other people that can listen to instructions or know that, okay, this is what I should do at this particular point in time. Mm -hmm. In their own case, they should be, they, they should be like, like an instructor to guide them to, okay, these, maybe they have a personal line that we queue, or in an advanced level, we have what we call uh, electronic system of voting, mm -hmm. whereby they can, they, they, they can operate gadget. They can cast their food through gadget. And aside that, they, they, we have a kind of office now that uh, we have like an essay or disability. All these people are, being, they are the ones that participate in that post, in that position. A regular person or someone that is physically okay cannot be in that kind of post. Mm. Most time, they are the ones that engage. But we have little awareness on, on this because People don't accept them. That's one of the major challenges that they, are, they have in the community. That okay, they 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 stigmatize that okay, they separate them. They don't want to relate with them. People don't want to relate with them. Mm. So these are reason. But if the government, as the government pass the bill now, now there should be like a kind of penalty mm. if you maltreat someone, or stigmatize yes, someone. Mm. or you label. So if everybody has that kind of picture in their brain, that okay. If I do this, there's a penalty for it. Mm -hmm. Now, there will be like a, a, a kind of level of acceptance. Sometimes. So they too can feel a sense of belongings to the society that, okay, this is my right, I can do this. But if they don't accept them, mm -hmm. they will continue facing the problem. But now that they've passed the bill, they, we should try to increase enlighten people more mm -hmm. that disability is not inability. Now, maybe the reason people find it hard, maybe not, maybe it's not really about acceptance. Maybe it's mm -hmm. just about doubt or hesitation. Can they really function? Do you think that an autistic okay. person um, can? I think because there are different levels of political functioning. Okay. I think that there are levels where they can. You know, because the political world is a place where things are very fast. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to be able, to, you need to be vocal. You need yeah. to be able to interact with people. And those are the disabilities that you find in autism. Mm. So there, there are some levels where they don't need to be able, they don't need to have all those characteristics to function. For instance, in elective positions. Okay. If you if you are if you are looking at um, positions where they need to campaign, like they need to go out and talk to people, that might be a bit difficult for them. Especially those who are on the moderate to the severe end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So they will need some form of policy that will say, of course we have it already, like a certain percentage of lawmakers, of um, commissioners and all those things should be people with disabilities. And we've started to see some things in that direction. Mm. So they might function in those areas where they are just appointed. You come at all this position and, and then they function well. Mm. You know. But when it comes to the real political world, it's going to be a bit tough for them because 
they have disabilities in the areas where that's what is required. The quantities or the qualities and the characteristics that they require are the ones that they are lacking. Mm. So that might make it tough. But I think more importantly, like um, Mr. Parami said, is that the society needs to be aware. So we need to understand that when people have disabilities, then they are not to be excluded totally from what the society is, is doing. They need to be included in it. And they need to understand that there are things that they can do that we can do, actually. There are some mm -hmm. things that people with autism can do that we, neurotypical people, can't do. I've often, heard, I've often heard that, that, you know, they, they do, like, the, the video we even saw now, I said they can do amazing things. Yeah, so they have, some of them have ex extraordinary um, and excellent ability in certain areas. Yeah. The, the phenomenon that is known as the ideal servant phenomenon. Mm -hmm. What they do is that, what they have is that in some area they are completely functional, they are fine. Like their memory, mm. sometimes their memory, they are in, in, in terms of music, in terms mm. of art, some of them are very good with calculations. Mm -hmm. Some of them, actually, um, there's a story of an autistic boy that I read, about 20 something year old, who was totally in charge of the train system in California. He was in wow. charge of ticketing and ensuring that the numbers are intact and all that. And it was really perfectly, with no error. So those are some of the things that we can do. Those are some areas we can explore for them to be able to function. Mm. So there are certain areas that might be a bit tough and difficult for them because of the challenges and the difficulties. But there are a whole lot of other areas where they can, mm. where they can function properly if we allow them to do. Okay. So as much as people are becoming aware of autism, we still have some people maybe living in rural areas that don't even know anything about Absolutely. it. What are some of the things that could be done, you know, to help such people? Okay, so I think we just keep talking about awareness, awareness, and awareness. Uh, if you come from the point of HIV, it's, I mean, almost everybody, even in the remotest area, will tell you that it will, we know that there's something called HIV AIDS. So we need to get to a point that everybody will know. And we have these children all over the place. So once you start to describe, they know that, okay, I think this, is, this boy fits into this description. And that, that will make things a whole lot easier for those who have it already to come out to say, because when people know that this is a problem and you are not the only person that is affected, it's, it's, there are quite many. As of today, the, in, in the US, you know, they update their data like almost every year. Mm -hmm. One out of every 59, one out of every 59 children will have autism. That means it's common, it's not, it's not, it's not something that is rare. So you have children in the, in the villages who have autism, but they are not being treated because people don't even know that it's a problem. So they think they are possessed or <laughs> there is something yeah. really, you imagine a boy or a girl in one corner talking to himself. So you, uh, cool. I mean, the only because explanation so is that mm -hmm. talking to his <laughs> Yeah, so the, the next thing is to take him or her to somewhere where they do, uh, do <laughs> deliverance and all that. So we have them all over the place. So we need to continue to talk about it on the radio, every opportunity we have in the primary health care system. The people who are in position of authority should also know because when they know, they can support people who are working with them. Mm -hmm. They can put facilities in place to help because another problem why people don't come out is when they come out so what do we do with them <laughs> we know he has autism so where do we go so we have some things in Ibadan in place but you can imagine a place like or your and all those other places is saying mm. even if you pick a child there will you bring the child to Ibadan so there should be facilities all over the place so that when they come out then there is a place for them to go so we connect with awareness with education on the media, you know, on uh, through policy and so on and so forth. Now, even the treatment, let's talk about how access accessible um, the treatment is. Sometimes some parents who have some children want them to have the best of treatment so they can manage Absolutely. it better. Absolutely. But how affordable, how accessible is the treatment? Okay, so um, things are a lot better now. Now, compared to the last decade or 20 years. Um, so at least now we have um, outfits and facilities that look after children with autism. We also have more uh, hospitals, even government hospitals providing care because in the past we were so much engrossed with infectious diseases like mm -hmm. malaria, you just want the children to survive. Mm -hmm. Now they have survived and then many of them now have this 
type conditions. of problems, conditions so that will need a long time care. Mm -hmm. So we have quite a lot of things coming up for them. We have NGOs who are quite committed to the cost of autism. Um, it's still very far from what is expected, you know, but like, like I said, if you put, pick on your state, maybe you have those things located in Imbado. And okay. that's just like a very tiny proportion of what is expected for people in your state. So we don't have, we don't have enough. They are not readily accessible. And then people pay out of pocket, which makes it very expensive. Because the care for autism is highly, is very intense mm. and is highly professional. So you need to be able to pay those people. So the speech therapies, the special education teachers, the occupational therapies, their medical bills, wow. a whole lot of that. And it's not something you pay for a year. It's, it runs over Long many time. years. So they, there should be support from the government, support from philanthropists to help the families who have children with autism. So it's a, it's not, it's a, it's a, it's a big issue for families who have children who have autism because they have to, some actually some women or mothers have to stop work because there's no, first of all, there's no school that will accept. Many schools, mainstream schools will not accept a child who has autism because of suddenly they start to scream and then it's <laughs> running all over the place and the other children are, you know, wondering. What's wrong? And then the other parents are now complaining. No, we don't want these children in our school. We don't child. want this kind of child. It's going to mm. influence our... So there, are, there is nowhere for the mother to keep the child. So he has to stop work. Oh. That's already a reduction in the income. The, sure. child, the income that was never enough. Mm -hmm. And so they have to look for money to pay speech therapies, to pay um, occupational therapies, to pay the special education teachers, to get some... the child to get some form of care. So that makes oh. it a lot very expensive. So we have to get to a point when the government will take up this responsibility, take up this role. In the US, if a family has a child with autism, they pay the family. Mm -hmm. Apart from the fact that they will take up all the other bills for this child. Mm -hmm. The families are supported. We know you are going through a lot. We know you are traumatized. You can have this to support you. So that is where we're supposed to get to. So the services are not enough. The, the few ones that are available are very expensive. So it's very, uh, very few families who can afford an, an access, you know. But like I said, that is a whole lot better compared to what happens 10, 20 years ago. Yes. Mm. So hopefully, it, it would, it can only get, it really can only better. get better. Absolutely. Mm. Do you have any final words you want to give us today on the program? Uh, like Doctor yesterday said, uh, public alignment, um, advocacy, and yeah. different angle. Uh, People should accept them that okay. Uh, I have disability, okay. but that's not inability. So mm. I can do all things like every other regular child can do, but at my own pace. So and um, government should create at least more rehabilitation centers, mm. more homes, and to equip more facilities in taking care of. People so they can properly cater to yes. people. Thank you so much for coming. We're speaking with Mr. Toba Baremi, who is a special educator, and Dr. Yetsunde Adini, who is a child and adolescent psychiatrist. Thank you so Thank much. You. You're welcome. Yes. All right, we'll take this break. Breakfast Weekend resumes in a moment. Just stay with us.